doing? Good, that's a terrifying picture behind you. I, look, he was terrorizing me for a whole movie by myself in the theater. I was shocked. <laughs> One of the questions that I do have is you have a really hard task in this film because you are this menacing person, but we never actually get to see your face and see you emote any emotion, emotional expressions. So I wanted to know, like, how much of a challenge that was for preparing for this role? Yeah, I had no idea how to prepare for this role. It was, it was just completely outside of my wheelhouse of anything I'd done before. Uh, I'd had some experience. I remember in theater school, they did a class on... Greek tragedy and mask work. And I found it really fascinating because there's a, a feeling and a confidence that you can get from wearing a mask. And it also can be really terrifying because you almost feel all the things you use to identify as yourself, your personality, the, the, the mask we all wear with our actual face every day, you know, um, is gone. And you have this other thing that you can't change and it's strangely empowering and then simultaneously can make you feel really vulnerable, like you disappear. And um, so I, I trusted the map of the script. The script is really good. Scott's really smart about how to tell a scary story. And when I saw that mask for the first time, I was like, I don't know. I just I got it. I could hear the voice. I could figure out how he should move. I just and I just rolled with it. You did that in the movie. I was here for it. But I mean, that? no, I said you did that. You did good in the movie. I was good, here for good, it. Good. That's my job. <laughs> but I mean, it's those little, I love how, you know, it's kind of this coming of age, these people that the kids come in contact with that really help them find their inner strength. And I, I thought that was really powerful to watch how that progressed from beginning to end. And I wanted to know for you while growing up, who was that person for you that like helped you realize the strength that you have within? It's a lot of different people along the way. One of the things that I like about the movie a lot is you there there is a moment as a kid when you realize that all the older people in your life don't necessarily have your best interest at heart. Um, and that's terrifying. Yeah. You know, and that there are people that do, people who take time, teachers, uh, you know, people, coaches, priests, different people who can actually go out of their way and do something good for you and take an interest in you. And I've started to learn like, wow, all those older people, they didn't have to do that. And, and I start to feel an overwhelming sense of gratitude for the people in my life when I was younger that did look after me and did steer me the right way and push me away from the wrong way or encourage the best aspects of myself. And, you know, as you get older, you start to feel a responsibility to take an interest in, in young people and take an interest and, and to pass that forward. And there's been some wonderful directors in my life. You know, when I think about when I was Mason's age, when you know, I couldn't help I'm doing these scenes with this young person. I was acting when I was his age, too. And I think about Joe Dante, who's the director of The Howling and, you know, Gremlins. He's a scary movie master himself. How kind people were. Peter Weir, who directed Dead Poets Society, extremely kind and a great leader to me. And, uh, you know, so many people along the way helped me out. You know, but even when I was... 30, I got to work with Denzel Washington really close and see, seeing him as a mentor, what, what is possible with acting, with the art of acting, how good it can be, you know, like those are important steps in a person's life. Love that. that was so fun. And thank you for actually paying it forward and giving back to the youth. Like, well, I try, I try to. I don't do it as much as I should. It's still important. Even the fact that you even make a thought to even do it, it really means a lot. Look, this was fun. I don't even know what else to ask you because you gave me such good answers. Oh well, my that's God. my job. Okay, and you did it. Look, <laughs> thank I you. I just want to thank you so much. I had such a blast chatting with you. Thank you so much for your insight and your just well thought out responses. I'm just sending nothing but love and light your way. And I well, you're sending you. love right back at you. I appreciate I that. It's, it's easy to do these interviews when somebody's really interested and asks such thoughtful questions. It makes my day so much better. So I really thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And you have great nails. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, how are you 
doing today? Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm a little stressed after watching the movie. I'm happy I don't have a rotary <laughs> phone because I will be on today. <laughs> That's great. Look, but thank for you. you for that. But one of the first questions that I have is this film is so many different, like, I can't even call it a certain genre because I was getting thriller. I was getting like the psychological aspects of it. And then the horror mixed at the end. I was like, did I just watch a coming of age film at the same time? How did you blend all of these things together while making this film? You know, that, that, that just is how that story evolved. You know, I think, I think it is, um, I think it's primarily a paranormal thriller because I do think it's suspenseful all the way through. But I think that emotionally, um, you know, what cuts through most consistently through that suspense is a, is a kind of empathy for these kids, you know, and, and that allows for a real, real emotional experience in the bond between them. And hopefully a lot of that's why the humor works so well, because you care about these kids. So these funny things that they say really break through and are very funny. And ultimately, I think it's about love. You know, it's a the, certainly the movie was told from a point of view of love and and has some real joy in it and hopefully inspiration at the end. But I I wanted to make a movie that had all those colors, but but was on the main track of being a suspenseful, scary movie. You definitely accomplished that. You definitely did. But I mean, we live in a society where a lot of people don't realize how harsh bullying was back in the day growing up. And I wanted to know the decision to actually show that brutality for what it was during this time period that this movie takes place. Uh, I really appreciate you bringing that up. You know, um, the whole idea of the movie for me was to take Joe Hill's brilliant short story and combine it with, with my own childhood memories, you know, and growing up in North Denver, the violence in the home, the beating with the belt, that was very typical for me in, in my life at that time. <clears throat> I lived on a block with 13 other boys. I was the youngest. I got bullied like that all the time. That was just the norm. You know, it was very common. The fights that you would see on, in, on the way to school, the bloodiness of some of those fights, very typical, happened all the time. It was just a different, different uh, time and place. It was not safe. I mean, it wasn't like you know, growing up in Compton or in the you know the South Bronx where people are you know shooting each other. It was like a different kind of thing. But that that unsafe uh, working class, uh, 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 un, you know, just terrifying presence of violence all the time and. The serial killer phenomenon had really entered the mainstream and en entered our, psych our psyche. The Manson murders had just happened. Ted Bundy had come through Colorado and killed a bunch of women and had escaped. My next door neighbor, my friend next door, came and knocked on my door when I was nine, and I opened it and he said, and he was crying, and he said, somebody murdered my mom. And his mother had been abducted and raped and wrapped in phone cord and thrown in the local lake. You know, so the idea of like the present mysterious killer who could just take you off the street or grab you out of your bed at night was very real. You know, so my predominant emotional experience when I was young was, was fear, you know, and I, and I, rather than a nostalgic look back on, you know, the late 70s, uh, you know, in a kind of Spielberg movie kind of way, I really wanted to capture what that time and place felt like to me. You know, and I wanted to put kids in, in that story and watch them overcome, you know, and watch them overcome because they had each other, because they were resilient, you know, because there was some divine orchestration involved. And, and I think most importantly, because they had the help of these other victims, you know, and that the vi these victims who didn't make it out alive are still seeking justice. And I love the fact that, you know, we get to know Bruce Yamada in the opening scene. We get to know Robin Ariano, this one friend who tries to protect Vinny. And even though they become victims of the grabber, they're the ones who are the most focused on justice, on getting justice for what happened to them. And I just think all of that makes for a really meaningful, beautiful coming of age story. That's so beautiful. Now I gotta watch it again after talking to you. <laughs> Thank you, that's great. I just want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with me. I really appreciate it. And I'm sending love and light your way. And I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Oh, that's that was very, really well spoken. I really wish you a great week as well. Very thank nice you. to talk to you. Hi.
Hi, how are both of you doing today? Hi, good. good. How, how are, are you? you? I'm doing good. I just want to tell you both, you were so fantastic in this movie. Literally, my favorite part of watching the film was watching you two. So I just want to thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> You're welcome. But I, I love the brotherly sisterly bond that you both forged in this film. And I wanted yeah. to know how was it working together and how was it bringing that relationship to the screen? See, I really didn't want to work with Maddie. Yeah, I, I hated either. her so much. I, 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 I begged Scott Nathan. to recast her, but he wouldn't. <laughs> sadly, no. Uh, my Maddie <laughs> is awesome and it was so fortunate to work with her and stuff. So yeah, I hope to work with her again. Yeah, I loved working with Mason. We got along super well and it really shows on camera. And I hope to work with Mason again in the future. I love that. But look, you both, both of your characters, you know, they both push each other and they help them find their inner strengths. And I wanted to know for the both of you, like, who are those people in your life that keep pushing you to know the strength you have within? Definitely my family and friends. Yeah, definitely my, I, I gotta say, my dad, definitely. He, he loves me so much and he's super proud of me. And he, yeah, I, I look up to him so much. But I mean, how is it being a part of this like horror film? Like, how do you make sure that you're decompressing? You're dealing with so much heaviness yeah. and creepiness each day. It's it's actually you you would you would think that it's probably super scary there, but no, it is so much fun. Yeah, it is really fun. Yeah, it, it, even filming the scenes with Ethan and stuff and the mask, it's incredibly scary. I mean, incredibly not scary. Yeah, but the mask is. I yeah, I think the part, the hardest part about filming it was after we were done with a really intense scene or just any scene in general, we'd have to go back and do school. It was so hard to focus after that, and we would just yeah. keep talking and goofing around. Yeah, it, it, it was super fun. Every, every scene was <laughs> so much fun. How are you going back to school after doing those scenes? That's crazy. I know. It was fun, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, you're a pro, because I would not have been able to go to school. I'm like, I need to rest of the day off. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> what are the one of the most memorable moments that you had while filming on set? Probably my rap day. Yeah, same. <laughs> but that was definitely super memorable, and definitely the uh, probably my favorite day would be the climactic battle between me and Finny and the Grabber. That was so much fun filming. So yeah. Look, I love how you guys just have fun while filming this horror movie because I was terrified <laughs> in the theater. Okay? Yeah, it, yeah it, it, well, it was same so with fun. us. Even though it wasn't scary on set, it was still terrifying when we watched it. Yeah. Even though we knew yeah. it was going to happen. Like, we knew a jump scare was coming, and we, we still jumped. So. <laughs> now I don't feel bad because I was jumping the whole movie, so I feel better. <laughs> yeah. Now. yeah. I just want to thank the both of you. You're absolutely fantastic in this film, and thank you thank so you. much for speaking with me. I well, hope thank, thank you for you. having us. Thank you. Oh, no, the pleasure is mine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.